<laughs> That's what he's saying when he flies by. <laughs> Except in a really high voice. Jason and I were in the car, and I was like, why don't we ever do that, like, in a car? Just drive up to one of these fuckers, like, we're driving through our neighborhood, and, like, just drive through one of these fuckers' front lawn. <laughs> Sorry, Goose. <laughs> it's time to buzz the house. <laughs> I was about to say, periodically, Brian's just going to yell, Maverick! <laughs> what are you? Guys in the living room drinking his coffee. Yeah, and just spills it up. <laughs> He's in his little breakfast nook. <laughs> Contemplating a sad life. <laughs> He's eating a sandwich. <laughs> Staring at the wall. Staring at the fridge. <laughs> Reading the breakfast cereal box. <laughs> Staring at all the dumb pictures his kids drew for him. <laughs> <laughs> right as he takes another bite of sandwich. <laughs> oh, we love married life. <laughs> Family life. The best. Oh, that's awesome. Are you ready to get this MMO show on the road? Almost. The um, advertisement yeah. is almost over, so I kind of wanted to give people a chance to see the tweet pop in. Oh, the advertisement. But, we have advertisement? Uh, Twitch does. We're not getting a dime for that shit? No, they, but they let us use their website for free. That's not like enough. Infrastructure. <laughs> I'm entitled. Remember when we were looking for a place like so hard to um, stream, and we were one of the oh, yeah. first shows to stream, but it was like ev- all the stuff streaming was porn, like yeah. amateur porn, <laughs> like, okay. all the stuff. We're like we're like the stupid little gaming show. We're like ignore that, ignore all those other videos. Yeah. <laughs> don't click on anything. If you click on one on accident, scrub your machine clean. I kept on, I kept on <laughs> thinking that anybody that came into our channel was waiting for us to undress and was really confused. <laughs> When are they getting naked? This porn sucks. <laughs> They're not even in the same room. I'm so soft right now. <laughs> They're just sitting there with a soft boner eating a sandwich. <laughs> so got their by their house. House. Yeah. It's a really good sandwich. <laughs> yeah, you're so some asshole. Down. Time to bust the house. <laughs> Drive just it from their door. Big, just dirt like grooves in their Ah. <laughs> anyway. That is from a conversation we had about four minutes before we went live, people. Sorry. It's a callback. We're at, it's 8.58 and we're already doing callbacks. It's going to be a good show. Mm-hmm. It's all news. Um. Yeah, but we can do it in our own zesty way, right? Zesty. I don't know. Zesty our, like our, time. With our seasoned sense of humor. I'm painting my nails. I'm putting on a clear coat, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to do these things. Turtle wax on them? Kind of. My one has... Well, it doesn't matter. I have a nick in one of them, and I'm really trying to nurse it along here. I have to cut it when I come back from camping anyway. Mike though, and the other one. It's totally jacking up my typing. Like, I'm typing... Like, they're so long at this point that they're, like, typing... Getting typos and stuff. So Your nails are causing typos. Yeah, it sucks. Oof. Being a girl's hard... So, so I know men can just come on to uh, these anything. shows and, and and they don't have to like do hair and makeup or anything and I'm really jealous of that but I still have some poison ivy in the sun in my face so I am not wearing makeup I haven't worn makeup in a week stupid face, so stupid face. <laughs> um, so I look terrible my hair's got to be pulled back like a like a super librarian here so that it's not in my super. face yeah all I'm doing all of these stereotypes there. Mm. Not a librarian, but anyway. Hello, Sounds chat good. room. Go ahead and start whenever you want, Steve. Sounds good. I'm just gonna drink all this uh, wine. I, you know what? I typically don't read the pre-show. I can, but we can force Brian to oh, as let's well. Let's make Brian do it. Brian, read the pre-show. Sorry, I don't have it up. <gasps> Son of a bitch. Did we share it with you? Yeah, probably. Hold on. Uh, Viagra. <laughs> Also, my volume keeps adjusting on its own. I don't know what the hell's going on. It just mm-hmm. keeps... Anyway. Uh, MMO show. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the, 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 the... Sorry, guys. There we go. Um, nope, that's not it either. Sorry, I don't have the notes. I don't know I'll where they are. I'll get it to are. you. All right, cool. Just a moment. I know that, that uh, Shannon emailed them to me, and I've somehow misplaced them. I'm going to send it again. Shared. There we go. That was so quick. Open. It's like email is instant. 
It's like magic. Right now, uh, that thing bounced off a satellite and down to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, there it is. What am I reading here? This is the first time I've ever done this show, apparently. The pre-show, right under the big title where it says, this is the MMO show, episode 7, recorded on Thursday, August 6th, uh, okay. 2015. Cool. All right. This is the MMO show, episode 7, recorded on Thursday, August 6th, 2015. Nailed it. Like a pro. It's 2015. He's, he can say it however he wants. He's the, he's the <laughs> guest host this week. I Canadianized it. Yeah. Oh, as they said in that Canadian accent. Canadified it. Welcome, <sighs> everyone, to the MMO show. This is episode 7. Very happy that you could be with us tonight, today, this morning, whenever you're listening to this. Uh, tonight on the show, we have... Shannon. Hello. What you drinking, Shannon? I have a rosé. It's a, a rose. Rosatello rosé. It is a product of Italy. A refreshing rosé from Italian vineyards, but from the finest selection that my Kroger could offer. <laughs> yeah. It's a good vineyard. Yeah. The Kroger vineyard? Mm-hmm. It's the, what's their, the private selection? Is that their thing? Oh, yeah, for all their, like, uh, like generic. Yeah, I'm sure they have a, a Kroger Vineyard in Gary, Indiana or something. <laughs> bottle My apologies to the trees. Yeah, residents of Gary. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any I don't apology. think you have to apologize to people who live in Gary. No, I'm just sorry that they live there. They know. Uh, tonight we also have Jason. Hey. What you drinking, sir? Crushing this fucking water. Yeah, I yeah. noticed uh, people that had just listened to the audio will not see the massive cup that he was using to drink the water. It was as big as your face. I've been I've been really hydrated lately. I guess so. We'll have to yeah. take at least two bathroom breaks during this episode. I've been peeing so much lately. <laughs> but no, we have to we have to do a lot of driving tomorrow, so I'm just keeping it keeping it hydrated tonight. Nice. Uh, we also have back. With us once again. Actually, is this the first on the MMO show? It is. It is. Oh my God! Long time uh, multiplaying podcast uh, podcaster. A little bit, a little bit of redundancy there in the announcement of Brian, Howdy. aka Grok. How's it going? How are you, sir? What do you have in the sippy cup? I have uh, Kettle One vodka on the rocks. Wow. I am jealous. I can't do that much drinking because of all the driving we have to do tomorrow morning. <laughs> Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. Saving the drinking for the driving tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Actually, we go up north, and he's he's got this like he he the guy that's hosting the weekend. He has his home brew, and he has four mini kegs set up in this huge like it's basically like a recycle bin that he's modified so that all the kegs are inside of it, so you can roll it around wherever, and then it's got all the stuff hooked up inside it for coolant and whatever, and then it's got like four taps on the outside. It's amazing. He's not fucking around. No, no, Darren doesn't mess Serious around. Serious business. Wow. Sounds like a fun weekend that I will be missing. Uh, but before I get to that weekend, I have a glass of the usual Di on the rocks. Yummy. Awesome. Yeah. Go on classic. You didn't, you didn't find any uh, root beer beer? Yep. Uh, no, but uh, mutual friend uh, of the podcasters here, Brooke, uh, tweeted earlier about the Coney Island root beer, mm-hmm. hard root beer, uh, and noted on uh, her Twitter feed that it had a strong hint of uh, like vanilla bean. And I really, really dig vanilla, so I'm going to have to try to find that. Yeah, that does sound good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have one of those up north because she's bringing a whole mess of that. Yeah, let yeah, me know what you think. a lot of it. Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to miss. Mm-hmm. Make you be so upset. Uh, yeah, so... Now that we got the introductions out of the way, let's get on to some MMO topics and news. Later on, we'll talk about uh, some Star Wars Battlefront, uh, possibly the Rare Replay that just released. Um, but we have a lot of MMO talk to, to get through first. Uh, I watched, I think I've, I'm starting this conversation the same way as I started last week, except for last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, I watched Jason doing some Twitch streaming. And this week, I watched Shannon do some Twitch streaming. 
I did so much streaming. I did like two days of streaming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just good for me, you know. And it was uh, very nostalgic what I was watching because yeah. you were playing EverQuest. Yeah, I was. I was. And oh, let me pull some of that up, I guess. Um, I there's a Twitter feature in original. Um, EQ now. And right, because yeah, it was around back then. No, but they add things. It's still a game that exists, so they add things. Don't be a turd. And, <laughs> and so what I did was I have been tweeting like my pictures as I was going, so yeah, it's it was fun. I just kind of... I stuck with the original UI, or not the original UI, the original um, character models. Okay, yeah, I noticed that they were pretty... Uh, I want... Pretty- to go back There's to all EverQuest. five of those polygons. Yeah, I don't care. I want to play EverQuest when I started playing, and like the new models aren't it for me. So, yeah, I went back and I tweet sometimes whenever I have a special moment in the game. Most of my mm-hmm. special moments have been outside of West Freeport, and I'm level four. I applied to a guild though recently. I don't know if they're letting me in because I'm level four. <laughs> oh. And, uh, but we'll see, you know. I haven't heard back yet. Um, not, not only the, uh, the just the graphics, but the animations too were wow, yeah. very basic. Yeah, I mean, really takes you back. But I'm playing on the pro- the progressive server or the progression server, whatever they're calling it, the one where mm-hmm. they lock it all down. So that's what if you're going to play that on that server, that's what you want. You want to go back to playing right all the old school stuff. So you want that vanilla feel? Yeah. Like if I wanted a new MMO, I go play a new MMO. So I'm kind of. I mean, but you got like the the Twitter feature on there that was added, but that's not really changing anything with the game. It's just like you a just slash tweet, and it takes a picture right. of whatever's on your screen right at that moment, and mm-hmm. um, type in whatever you wanted to say. But is there anything else that's kind of different that you can tell, or is it really like back to basics? Um, I mean, the UI isn't the original UI like we were talking about last week Jason was asking right. uh, but it's not the tank slit UI no no it, it's uh, and it, you can just the UI system there is nice you don't have to like go into any settings you can just literally drag and drop everything around like as you're doing it and it just stays it's awesome yeah that makes a lot of sense you think like you More know UI st- is uh, it, you know if you can improve UI that that's like nobody wants to go back to a clumsy UI or something that's a barrier to having fun mm-hmm. so it makes a lot of sense to at least have like an updated UI, but then the in-game experience is the authentic thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The stupid wolves. I went out to the common lands, um, and the wolves are all chasing me down and stuff. Few things that are different. Those wolves have been pissed for so uh, long. Yeah, <laughs> they're <laughs> pissed. Fuck. Um, a few things are different. Some of the like, uh, there's a couple more NPCs than I remember in the commons, and there's like. A few placement things aren't really placed the same way I remember in coming out of West Freeport, but I've heard that they have kind of updated some of the, you know, the geographical areas of certain zones and they can't go all the way back because the, the game has to be the same I see. across yep. all the servers or whatever. So um, that is the reason for that. So there was a little bit of a disappointment because the West Freeport gates didn't look, you know, how I remembered. I'm like, that's not how this was. But uh, I got over it quick, yeah. and I'm really uh, – Brent is the reason why I'm back. He kept talking about it like two, three weeks in a row there, and I'm like, well, I want to do that. I mean, even if I just do it for a month, it'll be kind of fun, you know. Um, mm. But I'm really liking it, which is kind of why I want to join a guild is because I want to join a community that's really liking it, that's like jumping online and, hey, we're raiding over, you know, here. Like anyone who's of level, come out. Like they're doing that stuff, like big guild raids and stuff. So I'm like – I want to get in with that and just kind of follow along and be there, you know. Not That's sure. awesome. Yeah. You said there's something weird about this that, like, they're releasing the expansions every few months or something like that? Yeah, it's every, I, I want to say every six months is what I understood um, that to be. So, like, every six months, like, like the first six months is just the, the first game uh, with no... Um, expansions and then they're going to do Kunark and they're going to roll it out like every six months. So you have like six months to catch up to the game, you know. What happens after they're all out? I don't know. I guess that's Does the they idea. reset it or? I don't know. That would be terrible, right? Yeah, it's kind of weird. I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of just, I don't know if I'll last that long. <laughs> so well, no. I'm I, taking it for what I can here. I, yeah, I don't sure. know what the plan is, the long-term plan there. 
They're going to start um, adding old expansions from other games. Yeah. <laughs> they get to the end and they start just replacing it with World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, Burning Crusade. Yeah. That's really weird. I mean, that's yeah. cool that that exists and it sounds like people who are playing it are really digging it. Yeah. Um, and I'm coming off of playing Star Wars Old Republic. So I've had that whole solo experience now for about two months. So that's another reason why I kind of want to get into doing. I don't mind that EverQuest does require a group. And it is, you know, something where I do want to join up and meet more people. Of an and... MMO with the multiplayer aspect. Yeah. But... Yeah. I'm, I'm starved for community at this point. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm really liking it, and I um, uh, we're going camping this weekend, so I really haven't had that much time to play because it's been, you know, shopping for this and that every night. So you think you'll be fiending when you come back? I want to play tonight, and I, I know I don't have time. I have to pack, so it's, right. yeah, it's gonna be bad. Hmm. I've been actually wanting to play when I'm at work, but that that's happens cool. a lot. That's <laughs> cool. That happens a lot to me, though. That's that is <laughs> yeah. That's one of the best feelings. Yeah, that's a sign of a. I've had this. MMO. Yeah, I've had that day where it's like, okay, this isn't really that important. I could be playing EverQuest instead. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had that that moment where I'm like, I bet this computer would run EverQuest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I haven't. I haven't gone that far yet. <laughs> when I worked from home, it was always difficult to not just jump in. Like it took a lot of willpower to just kind of like, all right, I, I suppose I got to feed my family and like have a house and shit so i won't jump on but fuck it would be so easy i could get so much done jason <laughs> jason you have some words of working from home i can either confirm or deny that uh <laughs> i uh will play during work and yeah that's all i'm saying <laughs> well that's cool i'm glad you're you're enjoying your uh trip back in time uh, anybody else been playing any MMOs this week? Uh, Guild Wars Two. Uh, yeah, that's what I. Yep, I'm still playing it. I log in every day. Me too. Uh, try and do. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> I'm 79. <laughs> <laughs> I've got four level 80 characters now, and uh, cool. and I've only used the scrolls on one of them. I've got another like, I don't know, 80 scrolls sitting in my bank that I'm not using, and I've got a. Yeah. I just there's no point in using them really for me because if I'm gonna play a character I'm gonna want to play the whole thing I'm gonna want to get like world completion and all that stuff and you need to go through all of the zones anyway and then you get d leveled when you go into the zone so I just I don't see the benefit of leveling up quicker than than what's naturally happening so yeah and I got a question for you regarding that like what's the most recent that you started leveling a character. Uh, I started leveling an engineer, uh, I guess maybe a month and a half ago. Yeah. So you've, it's been through like the new player experience content stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. how they laid that out. Yeah. Um, cause I've been playing the only Guild Wars two that I've been playing. It's every two or three nights, um, a week I'll, uh, jump on with my daughter cause she got her own account. So we started playing together yeah. and, and and my son started trying to play a little bit too, but she has a little bit easier of a time with it. But regardless, um, she doesn't know any different. But me, whenever we've started twice now with different characters, and I can't stand the new setup. Like I hate that it's so gated. And it's may maybe part of it's because I can't just rush through the content because I'm kind of trying to do things with her and take my time with her and stuff. But it just I when I'm sitting there and attacking things and I only have the first few abilities because the rest of them are time or not time but level gated before I can even access them whereas before I remember I'm going to go grab every weapon that I can and unlock everything and yeah if I know have everything I like best and yeah yeah I agree I don't think that was a smart move I don't know maybe they'll change it back once they get some sort of metrics back about you know how successful I it is I think it is a wonderful system for my daughter right I think it's a wonderful system for anybody new to the game, but I really, 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 really wish they would have just had that option in the beginning to say, is, is this your first time playing Guild Wars 2? Yes or no? And then if it was yes, you get that new player experience. Otherwise, it's Wait, just unlocked. So they don't let you just grab whatever weapon and start unlocking it? You can you can grab whatever weapon, but for the first, I think I think it's at 10, maybe you get the, the final fifth uh, spot opened up, but they really slowly unlock those abilities. Like the first level, 
I think your first level you only get the one, but the, well, by the time you're out of the tutorial, you get your second. But then I think it's still a couple levels after that before you can unlock the third ability. And then a couple more levels, you unlock the fourth, and then finally at level ten, you get the fifth. Whereas That's a before, bunch of bunk. I always went right yeah. to the um, auction house, bought the cheapest one of every weapon, unlocked yep. all that stuff before I was yep. like level five, <laughs> and that was done. I didn't have to worry about. It. I'd swim all... around forever, like do undoing all the like, you know, the underwater weapons, just so I was like set. What do I want to play? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a small thing, but yeah, it just it really. It, it makes the game, the beginning of the game, a little bit more boring to me by yeah. not just having Definitely. all those abilities. And you're not alone in that. I've seen a lot of feedback like that. Right. I, so. And I don't foresee it being anything that they go back and change, but I think they got bigger for fish to fry with the uh, expansion news, but we'll get into that um, a little bit later. Why? Uh, Why can't we talk about it now? Well, because it's all new stuff, and I wanted to keep it all compressed. All right, all right. Because it, it feeds off the wild news, too. Um, but yeah, are you still enjoying your time? I know I cut you off yeah. with my questioning. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I still love it. I, uh, just got world completion on my second character and, I'm uh, s- I'm jealous cause I, uh, not, not necessarily jealous, but, uh, envious cause, uh, I, every time I've gone back, I was like, ah, I'm going to work on getting world completion and I get like 5% more. I'm like, eh, I'm not going to get world completion. <laughs> <laughs> I see it it suits my play style. I like to like kind of be solo and work at things on my own pace and mm-hmm. so yeah, and then the living story. I'm glad that season 2 I lo- I missed out on season 1. Uh I didn't like the way they did that missing events and stuff. I need to be yeah. able to have my own sort of timeline. So season 2's been great and I've completed that now on my second character and yeah, I I do. I dig it. Uh you know, I'm frustrated with some of the things that Arena Net always seems to do which is like they're very cryptic in how certain things happen like I, I find that i have to do a lot more research in guild wars games to find out like what the hell is this uh um currency that i'm collecting what's it good for how do i use it like what's the point of it why have i got 400 of it like four stacks in my inventory and i still don't know what to spend it on or yeah, how does there's it like 12 different currencies in guild wars 2 it's right because like, they, every time that they add something into the game they create a new currency for it it gives people something new to collect and then they, yeah. when the next thing comes out they abandon the, the old currency and and that's kind of part and parcel for most mmos but what i find they don't do very well is explain things in game like thank mm-hmm. god for Dolphy. they should be like paying her a bazillion yeah. dollars because well she's got her own She's got her character in the game, so <laughs> right, yeah. So the, yeah, there's some respect for sure. But yeah, without so. her, you know, like I mean, and sites like that, I'd be really, really lost. So yeah, that's the, their communication in game has always kind of been uh, expressed as lacking by the community. The between uh, explaining what things are to just the lore in general, um, it's people have kind of complained. That's I think part of why they started moving along the path of the living story is because their initial uh, single player, not single player, yeah, single player story experience that the game launched with um, was a neat experience, but it didn't explain a lot of stuff. The, the world wasn't well explained unless you played a lot of Guild Wars 1. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, a little frustrated with that. But other than that, I'm having a good time. I love still doing a solid the, uh, game. Yeah, I, I do to coddle every every day that i can sometimes i'm a little late whatever but that's when i like the big the giant events and loot at the end and it doesn't take much to make me happy so yeah and i'm excited for the game yep should be uh should be interesting um i guess we can we'll just transition to it shannon you're right uh, <laughs> um they did they did say at gamescom because they were talking about uh, the Heart of Thorns uh, expansion at Gamescom, which is over in Germany right now, uh, they didn't say they did say, excuse me, uh, 2015 for sure, but they still haven't announced a release date. I was shocked though. Anyone surprised that it's this year? Yeah, because they've been uh, dwindling out information so small, and so it see it made it feel like like it was gonna be next year at least. Like totally, uh, totally, totally agree with you. Um, that was one of the points I wanted to bring up because Gamescom this week they also uh, Blizzard announced the next WoW expansion. Yeah, and I was going to compare like if you look at all the stuff and we'll 
we'll detail it down later, but all the stuff in the WoW expansion was like really laid out. Like, here's all the stuff coming in this expansion, and just in comparison to how Arena Net is laying out the the news on Heart of Thorns, it's very, very just drips at a time, and it doesn't seem like enough. Um, what are the highlights of the Guild Wars 2 expansion? Um, that there are... I heard new zone! <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, news, there's the, the Maguma Jungle will be opened up, but nobody really knows how big that is yet. Uh, there's the Masteries, which were still, even at Gamescom, they announced some more stuff about Masteries. Um, meaning, I think what they announced at Gamescom was that there are not only Masteries that are unlocked via the Maguma Jungle and the expansion, but there are also like the old world stuff. There's stuff that you can get through there, um, like with fractals and uh, other content. Which is nice to see that, hey, they are at least acknowledging the old content. Um, but the, well, I'm trying to think of what else has been announced. I mean, there's the specializations for the classes, which they haven't even announced all of what those are. They've yeah. announced like the Reaper for the Necromancer, the Druid for the Ranger, um, the Chronomancer for the Mesmer. The whatever the Guardian one was that you get the bow with. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, I have trouble with remembering those things. Yeah, like Dragon Knight or something, something weird. Yeah. Um, thief gosh. is still outstanding. What's that? The Thief specialty is outstanding still. Yep, don't know that one. Uh, they, did, they did just show off the Tempest class for the Elementalist. Yep. What else am I missing? So it's Warrior. just Engineer and Thief. And yeah, Engineer, they haven't announced what that is yet. They just We know that they get a hammer. Um, and then the Warrior... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess those are the three. Yeah. Uh, so we don't know all of them yet, and all we know is that there's a new zone, that there are gliders that you can use to help traverse the very elevated uh, uh, layout of the zones. But I think beyond that, I mean, there's probably little little bits here and there. I know they announced at Gamescom today or yesterday or whenever it was, uh, uh, auto-looting is coming. Finally, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that they're gonna, there's three new legendary weapons that are coming. Hopefully, put they, that as like the big bullet point, like on the back of the box. The auto loot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And the with the legendaries, there's a, it's like uh, simplified or, or at least it's a little less random. You you sort of it's a re- part of a reward track. That yeah, they, I think it was actually part of the mastery track. You can earn. A mastery to help you create your own legendary, which is like a kind of a fast track to getting a legendary. Yeah, I don't even know if it would be faster; it would just be less random, right? So, like, still lots right. of work, still hard, uh, but at least you can work towards it and know you're going to yeah, get it eventually. Feel a sense of progress towards. Yeah, it. you're not dumping weapons into the uh, uh, the pit Mystic of despair. Toilet. Yeah, trying to get random drops for yeah. That's. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like, from what they have announced, it doesn't seem like there's enough there to get to really get me excited about it. Just the fact that the expansion was announced months ago was enough to get me excited, but then like since it's kind of s- slowly not been that exciting for me. And it's weird, too, because uh, I guess it's, is it this weekend or a weekend after that that uh, the, the uh, sort of open that kind of starts, uh, open beta weekend. I think it's this weekend. And you can start playing some of the new uh, uh, classes. The Specializations. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. three of them still haven't been announced. Right. It's very strange the way they're kind of staggering this information out. Yeah. They did just... a, a uh, was it last weekend they did the peak of the new WW map? And yeah. Right. I haven't got... read into that and see how that went. I Yeah, all I... All I really got was Maeve on Twitter who she's a, a massive yeah. WW dub fan and mm-hmm. really, really hated it. Yeah. Oh right. I did read her tweets on that. She was not she said impressed. It, it was too much of the um some of the jumping and uh like uh something added some of more of the, the re- of the special events with the wacky kind of movement that really threw mm-hmm. her off of it. Yeah. Like she was looking at other MMOs to play just and Yeesh. she was really, really that's, upset. That's crazy. Like she's been only playing this game since it launched pretty much. And pretty much only playing WVW. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, to I don't know. 
I hope I hope they pull it out. I hope that it comes out and just wows everybody and Yeah. Um whenever it comes Speaking to Speaking of wow. No, I'm <laughs> whenever it comes to expansions, like that hype gets me in there for you got me for at least a week, people, when you have an expansion. Yeah. <laughs> After right. that, that. Yeah. You're like that guy in the uh the boardroom of the business meeting and someone's trying to sell you his invention. You got five minutes. <sighs> But yeah, um, we want to do. We want to get into WoW talk about think, the expansion. I think it's about time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, also at Gamescom this week, today, today, uh, Blizzard announced the next World of Warcraft expansion called Legion. Dun, and dun, dun. some of the bullet points that I gleaned from the uh, trailer were: there's a new class. There, uh, they announced the Demon Hunter because uh, Illidan or Illidan however you pronounce his name, is back. And uh, in order to combat the, uh, what do you call that? What was the Burning Crusade? The, uh, what was the bad guys in that? I sound like an idiot right now. The dicks. No, I... <laughs> the green dicks. <laughs> the jets. The jets. The jets. Uh, in so order to West combat Side them. Story. Huh? Sorry, that was West Side Story. <laughs> Uh, you can now become a demon hunter, uh, which is a tank and DPS spec available only to the elf race, though. Yeah, the two so elf either, races. Yes, yeah, the blood the elves or the night elf. night elves. Which it's a hero get, class too. It's it's not mm, like a yeah like the dark knight. Yeah, right. Or death knight, whichever. Yeah, with different uh, specs for DPS and healing and uh, what was the other one? Thought it was just tanks and tank and DPS. Tank and DPS. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what I had, I had read, but I don't. Yeah. We'll see if that's true. Um, there's a new continent, the Broken Isles. Uh, artifact weapons are a thing, and I kind of my immediate thought was that it looks like it's kind of like Guild Wars legendary weapons. It's yes, it's exactly yes! what I thought. And I don't care about legendary weapons, so I was just like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> they seem like they, they seem like they might possibly be kind of easier to come across so like maybe you can get one easy but then you it's have so to upgrade hot. it all this is hot keep, keep talking like that I don't care for that kind of humor go ahead Steve <laughs> <laughs> don't you pay, no, pay her no mind uh, there are going to be class guild halls what does that que- mean quests from it it seems like it's like a bigger garrison <laughs> well it seems like it's a way to get people out of the garrisons possibly like hey here's where everybody can kind of meet up uh who are of a similar class like all the uh paladins can go to the paladin guild hall and hang out and uh get quests from paladin grandmasters or whatever i don't know uh, i don't know what all comes with that i'm sure we'll find more out as time goes on and games gamescom goes on uh, there may be information out there right now that I have not read yet. Um, this was just all announced today, so it's fresh. Is uh, this the quickest they've announced a, uh, an expansion? Like, I yeah. probably. Yeah, I think they have to. <laughs> <laughs> but if they were promising that for like the last three expansions, that yeah. All right, from now on, we're going to start speeding this process up. But uh, it's always lagged out. I, but I, I wonder, is this is it because that they wanted to expedite the whole expansion process, get yearlies out, or is it that, hey, people are dropping off? Because the other news was that WoW was down in numbers to 5.6 million subscribers. Yeah. Which is like the lowest point in 10 years. Crazy. But yeah, I'm wondering, that happened. Yeah, if they knew that the numbers were coming out and planned this kind of around that. I mean, yeah. yeah, and, you know, they still have a lot. I mean, that's still a lot of subscribers, but it's also, it's, people. it's a lot of, it's, it's a large percentage of the sh- subscribers to have fallen off at a very, very quickly. I mean, no one can downshift that fast with a budget <laughs> expectation, but, um, so yeah, it's, I don't know, that number has to freak them out that it's dropping that quickly, or maybe they're planning for it. I don't know. It, the game's okay. old. The game is very old. Mm-hmm. Um. They've, they're still hitting numbers no one else is hitting, so it's not all doom and gloom or anything like that. But Blizzard also has money coming in from other areas. Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone. Yeah. and That's, That's got to be making them some major money right A couple right now. coins here and there, yeah. <laughs> uh, plus they have Overwatch coming out, right? Yep. So, yeah. And that's going to, I can assume, is going to be big. So, um, 
they they need to plan for when World of Warcraft gets old. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I think they have, you know, they, they're not going with the Titan route that they originally had planned, but they're making other plans. So I just hope they don't. I think this is a good show too. like bringing out this, um, this expansion this quickly is showing that they're not just abandoning, you know, World of Warcraft. They're not just, you know, they're, they're still putting content into the game yeah. for the community and, and s- hoping that it's going to be, you know, a viable. But I wonder what people's perspective of it's going to be. If they are, if they're quicker expansions, they're then obviously not going to be as much content as people are used to. My sister is a, is a, plays a ton and she and i were texting back and forth during the press conference and when it ended she was like well hopefully they're gonna review a lot more at blizzcon because this seems like not a lot of content for an expansion and you already have people from the last expansion which we talked about last week i think just that people are really upset with how much content ended up being in the last one. So. And that's what I was wondering about it, because if you look at what what they did show off, there's a lot of bullet points. Um, like one of the ones I didn't bring up was uh, there are new dungeons and new raids coming with it. Um, but if you look at like what came with um, the last expansion, Warlords of Draenor, excuse me, I forgot for a second. Um, it was the zone was big, but it wasn't. I think what was there four or five zones that were added on. Sounds about right. Something like that. And the new continent, if you saw the map, it's like four or five more zones. So it doesn't seem like space-wise and probably possibility of quests and quest content-wise, it's probably not too much different. But But is that better if they're coming out quicker? Quicker, yeah, right. Is that going to be enough to kind of keep people satiated? For me, there was nothing there that would pull me back into the game at all. Um, as is always the case with World of Warcraft, when I buy the expansion, it'll be because everyone else is buying it. And I just want to have that, um, experience of going back and playing with my friends for a couple weeks. But what's, I mean, but I'm not their target audience. I don't think. Right. And that's ex- exactly what I was going to ask is like, but is their target, does this what their target audience want, audience wants, or has their target audience moved on to other things, either non MMOs or other MMOs? And given that, like, if this if the trend continues of their subscriber base, do they need to do something really crazy with the game and say, here, we're laying our dicks on the table with this next expansion. It's either, it's just like all or nothing sort of thing. I don't know. I thought garrisons were like a big kind of line in the sand. It was like, here's a really different, gameplay feature that's going to totally change the way the game is played because we know you're leaving and so hopefully here's like a Hail Mary and you know hopefully you'll like it and here's where you can play by yourself when your friends all leave (laughs) (laughs) right and like going through like the like uh, World of Warcraft like subreddit and stuff a lot of people refer to the garrison stuff as like well they were trying to do Facebook games in World of Warcraft to try to keep people coming in and clicking on stuff Yep. Just to just keep them in there. Yeah. And it didn't seem to work. Yep. Yeah. No, that seems like after that shininess wore off of the expansion, that was one of the things people griped about. I'm logging in just to do my garrison and logging out. Yeah. And then well, I bet a lot of them just stopped logging in at some point then, if that's what the, he, all they were doing. And here's the problem. That kind of content is fine if you're a free-to-play game. So where you're totally relying on people coming in as often as they can because that increases the chances that they're going to you know, buy something Mm -hmm. on a whim. So, you know, that's the reason why you keep them coming in. But, you know, WoW is not a free-to-play game. Uh, It's a subscription-based game. You have to pay for the expansion. And so I don't know if adding content like that is appropriate. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons why there was a bit of a backlash, too. The other thing I was wondering is... Good point, Brian. The, um... I know we've discussed it on the show before, but it's been since... I played that it's is it in the game right now that you can kind of pay pay for your time in yeah, the game? Yeah, you can buy tokens. Yeah, that's in there. You can trade yeah. like these tokens and whatever for game. But does that and... count as a subscription then? Well, you could argue Sorry. Yeah, you could argue like a lot of people are probably playing free to play and then that makes yeah. you wonder really like what are their What's... sub numbers? Right. Like <laughs> are they mm-hmm. counting those token players as subscribers and they're not really paying a monthly bill anymore because they're pay- they're able to farm enough gold to keep 
their subscription going with in-game gold. Like, I don't know where you, they draw that line in terms of determining actual subscription. Yeah, exactly. Players, Cause if, you know. Because and... if it doesn't count, if they still have, like, 8 million people playing, but it only shows us 5.6 because 3 million of them are... Or vice, hey. or or the worst case, what if there's only like 3.5 million people paying exactly. <laughs> because they have a million and a half able to you you know count as being subscriber because they're taking care of it within game gold. Um, yeah, I don't know where that number is, and I'm sure that that's out there somewhere. Somebody knows that answer, mm -hmm. but I don't know that answer. I, so. yeah, do, I almost do we know. Wanna... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and I, I again, this is all assumption and speculation, but I assume that if you're paying with that token, your account still shows as being quote unquote subscribed. That's what I would assume. I would assume we should so ask I'm... Brent next week or something because yeah, that's how he pays he for his. There you go. So we'll ask him if he's subscribed. Um, but what yeah, he, according to him, like because he's he's someone who plays like a ton of World of Warcraft. You know that was his game. Well, you know, like a lot of people, it's his game for a really long time. Um, mm -hmm. So he's able to farm that much gold, and it's not a problem for him. For me, that would be like. Impossible because I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. Oh, this is game. boring me. I'm just trying to farm. I gold just want just so battle pets. Leave me gold. alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You make money off these battle pets. <laughs> I could sell battle pets. I would be all set. Um, but yeah, I'm, battle I'm, pets. I'm putting my. Uh, I'm putting this uh, clockwork squirrel yeah. out for stud. No, I do love battle pets, but again, that's something that I'll play along with my subscription. But then it's it's not enough to keep me in that game because that little bit of game on its own is not a, worth a subscription. You know, that's another, like, add-on type of yeah, game like the Garrison. Just make an so. iPad battle pet game. Oh, give yeah. me that. Give me, yeah. That would be cool if you could, like, take all your battle pets from World of Warcraft through the Battle.net account and play on your iPad, like Pokemon, everybody. Yeah. Give mm -hmm. me that. I'll do that all day. We should work with Blizzard. <laughs> What do we think the threshold is before they actually go free to play? What, what's the subscriber threshold where they go, okay, that's it? That's two million. Convert. Yeah. You're calling it a two, huh? Yep. They got a ways to go. Like, they, they got, got like another year and a half. We'll we'll so. see people getting laid off. Big that time. That would be awful. First. Yeah. I don't know. They seem to be pretty good at like coming up with new IPs and funneling people over to that stuff. That's so, true. Yeah. Moving teams around from project yeah. to project and their strengths. That's true. Yeah. And, and they have and enough going on. I think it's going to be one of those things that they put, it would have to be like, they put this expansion out and it failed so miserably. That's, it's right. going to sell. <laughs> if, yeah, for the foreseeable future, they're going to have that huge jump in subscribers for a period of time when the expansion comes out yep. and rinse and repeat for a while. Totally. It'll drop though. I don't think they'll get as many this time. I do. I, I do too. I think yeah. it's going to be it's going to be a slow decline of jump up and then and probably more subscribers leaving. Like the percentage of not coming back. But I had this um, slight panic, like not really a panic, but like this jump, this jolt, if you will, where um, I heard their number. You know, was down to five point something mil. For subscribers and i wanted to say didn't final fantasy say their worldwide subscription number was up to like four, four i don't know what it's getting we're getting close to a dethroning of world of war within a million and a half to two That's million crazy. people which is still a crazy amount of yeah, which a lot of emos would kill for that but, number but I, yeah but yeah I mean, <laughs> I'd, it I know be, Final Fantasy and Guild Wars are both up there, but Guild the, Wars is not a subscription game. They're I'm just, not sorry, Guild. I meant uh, Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft. Right, right. No, I said Guild Wars. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay. I know, like player base wise, I, Guild Wars is hard to to figure because it's not oh, a subscription yeah, I, game. I'm just comparing subscription. MMOs, right, but between but. the subscription games, I know Final Fantasy has gotten way up there. Way up there, and for it being, uh, you know, a, a classic subscription based game, mm -hmm. it's easier to compare it you know, directly to that. But, totally. you know, it's it's been so long. Well, it's been never since World of Warcraft came out. No one could touch it. And we're getting to a point now where you have a game that's... Nipping at the heels. Like, yeah, might be within reach of dethroning it in the next maybe year or two <laughs> if they and continue. It, amazing if it does because of the game, how the well, game... It's going to happen yeah. someday. But Went from total shit to, hey, we have to re-release this later. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So, Heroes of the Storm is a good game. Speaking of Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> Speaking of Final Fantasy. You're welcome. This motherfucker's still playing it. 
<laughs> you, you're making me want to play, but... You are not put... making me want to play, but I am shocked that you're still playing. Absolutely I, shocked. I'm... Um, really no one said... Enjoy. No one thought you would. No, I'm really, no, really enjoying it. Uh, amazingly, though, is that last week when we were on the show, uh, I think I had just hit 30 and got Scholar unlocked. And this week, I'm only 34. <laughs> I've not moved very far with the scholar, but I've been doing so much other stuff in the game, uh, including like leveling my weaver. Uh, level I started leveling alchemist and started leveling botanist. Uh, I went to the golden saucer finally, uh, which if you have not played Final Great Fantasy, restaurant. what's that? Mm, the, my the favorite house. restaurant, the golden yeah. saucer. <laughs> It's just a really dirty place. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a place I'm not allowed to go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're allowed. Just, just have to bring singles. It's gross. Feels so My dirty. mommy said I was not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you've not played the game, it is kind of, I don't know, how do you explain it? It is like the casino in the game. Uh, there's a lot of mini games in there. That's where you would do chocobo racing. Pachinko there? Kind of. Um, there's a claw game. Uh, there's uh, like you shows play going on. in there? Huh? I wish. They, I wish <laughs> you know what? Um, I wish it was more like Hearthstone, but there is a card game in there. Uh, cool. Triple Triad is in it. You get it. You actually start the game in uh, the Golden Saucer. Uh, but then you can actually challenge other NPCs throughout the world in Triple Triad. Um, and it is, it's a collectible card game. You actually pick up these cards that have... It's a very basic game. There's other games that have been like it. Actually, Skylanders had a version of the game in Skylanders. Um, I can't remember what they... It's called Skystones. My God, it's horrible that I know that. Um, there was uh, the Eye of Judgment, as if, if anybody remembers that PS3 classic that used the PlayStation camera. It's the same type of game. Basically, you get these cards, and either on each side of the card, each of the four sides, uh, has a um, number value. So you have a nine-card grid in a square that you lay these cards, and you and your opponent are going back and forth laying the cards in. And it's kind of like playing dominoes that you're... And I can't say that's not true. Um, you're laying a card down, and if they lay one right next to it, and their number is higher on that side than yours, then they flip yours to their color. And then whoever has the most colored cards on the table at the end wins. I can't help but think this would be way more interesting if I cared. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, I was Probably. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's... <laughs> You can say that about anything. I feel really bad about my tri triple try <laughs> card collection now. <laughs> Sounds like my Friday night. <laughs> I'm sorry. You you <laughs> feel free to use that on me the next time I talk about anything. I just it was one of the things that popped in my head that I was like, that would be so fun to say right now. <laughs> okay, I don't know what else to say. But no, it was it was really interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> Shut up. Um, Cards. no, beyond that, I've actually been spending more time in crafting than doing anything else in the game, and I still really, really dig the crafting, and what's cool about it is that it seems, just like the rest of the game, it seems like the further in I get with it, and the further I level up any of the crafting disciplines, the more interesting it gets. Cool. So, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. That's mm -hmm. a, a good crafting system, if it can manage to hold your, uh, cause, like, I, I mean, I know this, it's the holy grail of crafting, but Star Wars Galaxy crafting. I haven't found a yeah. crafting system since. Yeah, it's this. nothing like that, but it's and it's but it's nothing like the crafting in Final Fantasy is nothing like anything else either. Oh, that's good. It's kind of totally different. Like each each crafting discipline is its own class, and you level them up, and you have class quests. You can go and do. Uh, you can go to certain areas in the game and get what they call levy quests, which are hey, you go to this NPC and you accept the quest, and you have to go and do perform what she's asking she or he is asking you to do within this area within a certain time frame oh, okay um, so I it's, like, it's cool stuff i like in-depth crafting system and i like i liked arc ages crafting a ton i liked yeah. um uh final fantasy's crafting a ton star wars mm -hmm. galaxies was like no why no one has redone any of that i have no idea but <laughs> mind-boggling like, nobody yeah. like well i, I don't want to say i just named 
three. So it, clearly some people do put the effort into making crafting of like an important part of the game. Uh, but more, like more need to do that. I love that whole crafting can be a whole community aspect type of thing rather than this yeah. side gold sink that so many MMOs just shove it into, you know, mm. like, but anyway, yep, that's all I got. Sorry. And that's really all I got that's for Final Fantasy for this week. So cool. That is it. Uh, last bit of MMO news before we move on to uh, the stuff we've been cheating on. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, Knights of the Fallen, had a gameplay trailer. Very quick, like one and a half minute thing, uh, showing some of the content the game in within the game. Uh, and I don't know if any of you guys watched it. Is that the Become an Outlander trailer? Yes. Like, where it showed the actual, like, in-game, like, the Jedi going up and talking to the guy that was in the CG trailer. Maybe it's not the same trailer. I haven't watched the I'm, trailer. I'm, I'm watching it now, but that's not going to help you. Does it look anything... T- tell us about it, Steve. If it's gameplay, it look, what, what looks different than standard? Chances are our audio audience hasn't seen it either, so talk well, about it. Yeah. It's it's gameplay as in it's only just... It's use, using in-game, like, cutscenes. They don't actually show you what you're doing uh, okay, in-game. Gotcha. Um, but I will say the cutscenes looked really, really good. They looked looked a lot more cinematic than the, the cutscenes and the interactions within uh, the classic game. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how that transfers over in the end. Like if all of the cutscenes are that cinematic looking, but the whole time I just kept on thinking, I really wish they'd just make the thing a single player game. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It. It was looking good enough that I'm like, I just want to play this by itself. I don't want to pay this. I know we complain about that constantly on here, but I don't want to pay the sub to play that stuff, but I want to play that stuff. Yeah. But you don't have to pay the sub. Uh, no, but getting to that point without a, paying the sub is a drag. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I have this thing where it's like, if it's a good game, you should pay them for the game. But on the other hand, if I'm... Buying a single player game, just let me pay you once for the single player game rather than subscribe. I heard he gave him a lot of so, money. Yeah, I know. yeah, I know. That's why I eventually <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, all right. And then if it was a single player game, they could improve that experience anyway, right? So what are they holding back by keeping it an an MMO? They are like giving up some things, like in terms of, for instance, one of the things that always bothered me about the game was. Cities look barren. You walk into a city and there's like three people over there and two people mm-hmm. over there, and and it and I know that's because they're anticipating well what happens when there's a big crowd of people, and so they've limited that. But if they made it a single player game, they could have cities teeming with people like they should be in Star Wars or like yeah. in Star Wars Galaxies where the cities were actually functional things the players made, so they were always teeming with people because they were just actual cities of people mm-hmm. doing things. Yeah. But yep. anyway. Yeah, I think there are a lot of good arguments to making that a uh, a single player game. I, and I, I'm sure there are lots of arguments to keep it an MMO. I think money is the argument to keep it an MMO <laughs> because I think they're I think they're making a lot of money doing it. So Yeah. But anyways, that's all we got. For, unless anybody has something before we move on. That's I, a no. That's that's all I got, pal. That's that's a no. That's a lot for a week. That is. There's news. Yeah, we Rarely have. Rarely we have this a much lot news. Of stuff, so. Um, so maybe next week we'll have some more before the end of Gamescom come, uh, is uh, drawn to a close. Uh, well, let's get into cheating on MMOs. And I am very, very, very curious about Jason's thoughts on the rare replay. Um, so Wait, time out. What is Rare Replay? What? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is a collection. It's an Xbox One game that is a collection of 30 games from the developer Rare going back to their early 80s. Um, some like PC-ish games up until I think the last one was Nuts and Bolts, Banjo-Kazooie, which was an Xbox 360 game. So it's it's I really like a lot of Rare's games, and I even kind of didn't realize some of them. My favorite Nintendo games were Rare Rare games. Like I had no idea RC Pro Am was a Rare game. Hell yeah, yeah, that was when I played a shit ton of. So I, I I'm really really enjoying it. That there was uh, I I've been last year I've probably been jonesing to go back and play Cameo 
which was a 360 launch game, which I don't, it didn't get a great reception, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and that's in there. Uh, Nuts and Bowls is a uh, Banjo Kazooie game that I had never played either, but I heard people rave about it, so I've been playing that. So that's really good. There's some frame rate issues with some of the stuff, which kind of, really? yeah, like Banjo Kazooie right now, I'm not Nuts and Bolts. I'm kind of waiting to see if they patch it because it really, it really chugs when I'm in Dying. some of the worlds. Yeah. Mm. Um, but other than that, that game's super fun. I don't know if anyone ever played it, but it's, it's building contraptions and, and, cars and stuff like that um, i have uh here's a secret about me mm-hmm. i've never played a banjo kazooie game okay well this is a very different one yeah um yeah but it, it so far it seems really really cool and that's probably what i'm gonna sink most of my time into right now um but it's, it's some of the games like grab by the ghoulies i had never played it was an xbox one game and that game is I think by far the best looking game on the compilation. And like, if it was released today, it would still look pretty good. No uh, shit. Yeah. It's got, I put, I said on Twitter, it's got an art style that kind of reminds me of Willie Beamish where it's somewhat cartoonish and that probably mm. helps it a lot. Um, but, uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I, I would hope at some point that comes out on PC, especially with how Microsoft has been pushing a lot of their stuff, uh, PC with windows 10. But right now it's just, uh, Xbox One. I have a very important question. Mm-hmm. I presume you've been playing RC Pro M. Yes, I have. When you pick up the letters, mm-hmm. do you spell out Nintendo? Um, I you know, I, I just messed around with two and I for a couple tracks and I didn't see that no. So I'm assuming that's not gotta, there. Gotta go back, play RC Pro M one. Yeah, I remember that from Re- report back. I'm guessing no because like, but that they, was a critical part of the game, though. Yeah, that was how you got on, like upgrades. I'm sure they changed it because what uh, was kind of disappointing is when you go. It, the game does a really good job of of presenting the games, mm-hmm. and they have a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff that you unlock. You get stamps for playing and, and getting achievements in games, um, but it's really crappy because when you go look at the game info before launching, it says what year it came out, but it doesn't say what system. So huh. they, there's no mention of Nintendo anywhere in there. Well, they probably have to pay them some royalties or something, I assume. Yeah. Well, hold on. You, you pick up letters? What's, what's the in RC that? Pro? And you, have you ever played RC Pro Am? No, sir. Okay. It was a top down racing game where you were basically controlling RC cars. Cool. Uh, but on the racetrack, you would come across. Uh, Quick power ups that would give you boosts, and you would come across like oil slicks that would spin you off. You could get weapons, either they would be the um, bombs that you would throw behind you or the little rockets that you could shoot ahead of you. But also, you would come across one on each track Hot. in succession. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right across the face. Um, you would uh, see letters. And you would pick up one on each track, and you would only be go around the track like three times typically. So you kind of had to nail it. Here you go uh, on one of those three tries. But after a series of tracks, you would spell out the word Nintendo. When you finally spelled out Nintendo and you got all the letters, you would upgrade to the next class of car. Cool. So my question is, like, well, since this is on on a Windows platform now, since Rare is owned by Microsoft, how does that right. work? I'm JB, sure it's, it's just changed to something else. JB Blaze in the um, chat says you have to spell out Windows 10. Do you? Seriously? No, I don't oh, think so. Oh, he's just excited for <laughs> Windows 10. I, I think it's boobies. <laughs> boobies? Yeah. Maybe. Boobies. I can see it maybe maybe having to spell Microsoft. I don't know. Yeah, if it's it's got to be something else. <laughs> Gates. I, Gates. I, will, I will play Gates. and report back to you. Xbox. It's really easy to spell now. Like, well, you yeah, have to collect you, half of them. You upgrade so quick. What I'm most looking forward to playing, and I'm going to wait until uh, I'm back from the weekend trip, are the Viva Pinata games, oh, which are so, so I think most of the un- some of the of most you. underrated games of the like last ten years. I just wanted Trouble in Paradise to come out on PC, and I would own it. Yep, that's the one I'm going to play. And I fucker, I want it. I I'm tempted to just buy the old one, the first one on the PC, and be done with it because yeah. I think I can still get a copy. Yeah, it's just a bummer because Trouble in Paradise just. I mean, it was a better game because I've it, never played it. Yeah, I, because I've, of that. 
it's 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 the same game but just with a lot of smart changes and and you know natural evolution but yeah one's still good but i'll be spending most of my time in trouble in paradise (laughs) ah you fucker um i have not honestly really cheated on too many mmos this week i've been uh still classic i've been playing a lot of rocket league um and wanting to get back to playing some some splatoon because i think there is an update coming mm-hmm. uh, I my Wiimote uh game yeah. pad on just a little bit ago say hey fucker you come play this yeah Stuff. i need to get back to playing that that's so good um, but I did spend uh, the couple minutes watching the Star Wars Battlefront Fighter Squadron gameplay trailer. Did you, anybody see that? No, I heard a lot of people talking about that actual mode, and it sounds they were all saying it was cool. So I, but I don't looks know. looks looks really cool. Uh, you can tell that in the trailer, it looked like they kind of intermingled between here's actual in cockpit gameplay and behind the ship gameplay. And here's also some kind of like cut sceney looking, Hey, we used in game assets, but we're making it look a little bit cooler for the trailer sort of thing. So if I, if you just watch it and focus on just like the in cockpit and behind, uh, craft views, uh, it still looks really, really fun. Um, but the other stuff I think <laughs> kind of helped hype the thing up, but even though they're not really part of the game, but it looks good. I can't. I cannot wait for that game. Even with the the ship combat looking as good as it does, I will probably never step inside a ship. I will be on the ground the entire time. I, but I know there's still be. People. You'll be relying on other people to make it rain. Exactly. <laughs> I want to. I want to write down in basic and on a piece of paper mm-hmm. and hand it to someone a little thing in basic in Star Wars the common tongue. Make it rain. All right, we'll we'll play, and I'll I'll hook up my uh, flight stick. I'm going to hand it to you, and I expect you to make it rain, Jason. Okay, I'm going to make it rain. All right. I'll, I'll end up like Dak in Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Suck some Dak, yeah. <laughs> Mad Dak. Mm-hmm. Uh, that game's like uh, what is it? It's, it's is it September, or October, or is it like November? I can't remember. I th- I know it's supposed to be this year, but I can't remember what the date is. I think it's. Uh, the- I want it. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Very excited about games this year between Fallout Four and Battlefront. Um. Yeah. I'm pretty hyped. It's gonna be a good year for games. Mm-hmm. Hey. Uh. Have you guys ever played any of the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon games? Oh yeah. Yeah. Killed so many children. <laughs> I am. No, uh, it's not about the game, Steve. I'm working on oh. the UI for Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Oh. Really. Yes, sir. Look at you. That's uh, that's all the information I can give out. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, uh, just I started working on that. Uh, I guess all you can say is that the UI is going to be fucking awesome. It's going to be fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that that might be some interesting news. It's uh, it's kind of fun to be working on a, a bigger title. So what are you working on? I missed everything. Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Ooh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I've uh, I've not played too many world building games. I played uh, the cities, uh, the new cities game. Uh, oh, did you like that? Skylines. Yeah, Skylines. Yeah, I did. I liked it a lot, actually. I need uh, to get that. Yeah, it's good. I think it's that on sale. Okay. Yeah, I think it's on sale, or at least it was on sale a little while ago. So, but uh, yeah, it should be fun. So that's Ooh. my bit of cheating on MMOs is uh, getting into that stuff a little bit. Neato. Yeah. That's that's some good cheating. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I cannot wait for that. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think. It's been I think two Roller Coaster Tycoon two was the last one that I played. It was there was a three I thought right. Yeah. Yep. There's okay. a, three's been around for a while. It's been okay ten years. So. Wow. Yeah. See, so yeah, yeah, I remember. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been so long since I played those games. I remember loving them. Yeah. Spent so much time in two. Lots you would uh, you would jack up the. Uh, Poncho prices whenever it rained. Because <laughs> I, I, I passed the note to the guy that said, "Make it rain." rain. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> oh man, full circle. And then he passed me the note and he says, "Murder the fuck out of those poncho prices." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the kids. <laughs> and then the children who just bought ponchos. <laughs> and then collect the ponchos and resell them. I have. <laughs> 
You should put that on the box. <laughs> you should tell him to do that. Child murdering simulator. Yeah. I'm amazed at how much like attention to detail the fans of that game put into like just roller coasters in general. Like mm-hmm. they know every last detail about like the different types of roller coasters that are around and what it takes to make them and the physics. Yeah. Just That's... you know, they're going through like because they just recently announced to the the because it's gone through a few developers, so they just recently announced who the new developer is and and uh, and some screenshots, and everyone's just like totally pouring over those screenshots with a fine tooth comb, looking at like, you know, oh, I noticed the platform is like a little too low or a little too high, and it'll be difficult for the you know people for the peeps to get onto the ride, and you should lower those, and you know, oh, it's great to see this feature and this feature, and it's stuff that I had no clue about, but you know, I'm on a different section of it. The rest of the the team were well aware of all those little details. It's pretty cool. Just Talking wonder, people. That's awesome. I just wonder, like, what are those people playing right now? Are those people still playing yes. the current I roller coaster? I bet they are, because that's their game. That's their genre, right? That's yep. just crazy yeah. to me. That's so yeah. cool, but yeah. it's also, like, I can't imagine... How, how, like, ADHD do we sound? Like, that we're jumping from MMO to MMO. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I can't <laughs> like, imagine... And pouring there's into so much one content game in like MMO, that. We pour into but, like one game like yeah. at a time. But then we get kind of burn out of it and move on to something but that's else. That's them for years, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But it's nice that you have like that the the game is very mainstream enough that you can appeal to a wide audience and yet you have these people that are going to pick it up and play it real hardcore for a week or a month, but then you also have these people that that's going to be their shit until the next yeah. one comes out. There are yeah. a, there's a, a group of people who are preparing to build a new com- or buy a new computer for when that game comes out. <laughs> yep. That they've still been running on their Tandy yep. or whatever, on Roller Coaster ty- or 3 or whatever. I've got a couple yeah. of things for after we're done cheating. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We're done okay. cheating. Are we done Are, cheating? I think, I think we're done cheating. Okay. Jason or one of you guys, if you could pull up iTunes. We did get a review this week, I know. And just could you pull up and read it, Jay? Or Steve? Or I'm pulling it up. Okay. And then I had a listener contribution while he's pulling that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, JBJ Blaze posted, um, do you think the direction where subscription-based MMOs goes free-to-play eventually is good or bad or otherwise for the genre. And he said also, thanks for the great show and good night. Um, Repeat the question again? Do you think the direction where free, where subscription-based MMOs go free-to-play eventually is good or bad or otherwise for the genre? So basically, like, you have, you know, like, pretty much Wildstar, I guess, would be the prime example of that. You have the subscription-based oh. MMO, but... And so many people were pretty much just waiting for it to go free to play way before they announced it, you know. Um, and, and that's happened with lots and lots of MMOs, uh, you know, as we've seen. That's kind of been the formula. Um, uh, Final Fantasy being the exception to the rule lately. Um, mm-hmm. do, but anyway, do you think that is good or bad or otherwise for the genre that that's happening? more? I think know? it's always good or bad for the game specifically. Yeah, I think um, it's bad for my play style. Just because if yeah. I'm, if I'm going to play anything, I'm going to probably subscribe because I feel like I'm missing out. Oh, I thought you were going to say because of our. Oh yeah, our, no that our, that yeah, it's totally true too. Our gypsy lifestyle between going from MMO, MMO to MMO, yeah, yeah. as one because like Wildstar will be coming free to play, like Shannon mentioned, and I can see picking up and trying it out when it goes free to play but yeah elder scrolls would be another example yeah know, like, right i've considered jumping in and checking that out but see the thing is where if i pay a subscription i'm gonna play it for at least two weeks of that month mm-hmm. and probably play nothing else but that you know i'll probably dedicate myself for a little while to that game whereas like elder scrolls there's a lot for me to like about that game but mm-hmm. now that it's free to play i'm i'm like oh yeah i'll get to that Right, but if you, if I'm gonna play yeah. that, I I because I, I loaded it up a couple of months ago, started playing, and then you know it always prompts you, hey, subscribe and get blah blah blah, and it's it was stuff like leveling faster, 
Mm-hmm. And like right there, if I'm going to spend significant time with it, I'm just going to subscribe. And, and otherwise, I feel like I'm missing out. Like Old Republic right now, I'm subscribing. It's mostly for the experience boost. But mm-hmm. I, I can't think of a free-to-play MMO where I really got sucked into it and didn't um, take the sub option. Right. I think the one thing, though, I kind of just not not game specific. I know I started us down the discussion of good or bad for game specific, but uh, for the genre, I honestly kind of think it's a bad thing because it's become this expected thing right. that an MMO is going to come out. And if you're going to almost everybody now, when you announce that it's going to be a sub, it, people kind of have expected that, oh, okay. I'll wait until this game goes free. Oh, with, wait, again, yeah, yeah. Right. With again the exception of the rule seeming to be Final Fantasy, that's kind of dodged the bullet and it's done well for itself. But it's been for the last handful of years now. Anytime anybody any MMO comes out, people expect it to either launch free to play or become free to play. Yeah, they give the countdown. I give it right. three months before it goes FT F two P. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimately, I think the whole, as it's been happening to each game, has become bad for the genre. And, mm-hmm. and we're using free-to-play interchangeable with buy-to-play, because the assumption here is that, as we're talking about it, you've bought the game when it launched, and we're talking about a free-to-play subscription model after that, right? Yeah. Cause, right. Because technically those games are still pay-to-play, right? Like, True. Or buy-to-play. Yeah. Yeah. You have to still pick yeah. up the, the Cause, box. Because like Elder Scroll, you still have to buy the box. Um, mm-hmm. And Secret World, I think you do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So although that's on sale a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, you can get that for like five bucks, but yeah. Yeah, and there, there's definitely been a lot of games that needed to go that route and have changed their model and done well. Um, but yeah, it it's not. I don't know. I think it's bad overall. But it's, I do too. It's, but I think it's, it's good for indiv- like you like Steve said, individual games had to make the right call for themselves, you know, to survive. Mm-hmm. So. Well, because like if you look back at like Lord of the Rings, yeah, that, ne- that never would have made it if it wouldn't have gone free to play. Yeah, yeah. it got like you know what an extra five years of life, yeah. like longer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the big one that jumps out at me. Yeah, DCUO still going. They're still making content. I guess mm-hmm. that's working out for them. Wildstar. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but again, with those like when I played DCUO fairly regularly for you know four or five months, I subbed. Because I, I don't know. Maybe it was the mentality of me to was to where, like, if I'm putting money to it, I should be. Pl- I, that makes me more apt to play it, where it seems disposable if there's no money attached to it and it doesn't. But I don't. I don't. I don't think that's it. I just feel like I'm missing something, and I I just want to sub if if the if the if the quality is there and the value. Totally. Well, we want to read some reviews. Did you pull them up? Yep. All right, we have I think one five star review. Two. Yeah, we have yeah we have a couple now. Yay! Okay. But I'll read the one um, from Flux A. Or do I? Should I go through all the names and stuff? Or I, I would like. I would say, who read it and then what they said. Like. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. if you le- read a list of names, you won't know who said what. Oh, I know. It's gonna be really you confusing you can, for everybody. You can, you can fix this. <laughs> Let's play a game and say who, which name did which review. <laughs> no. Okay. No? So okay. yeah. All right. So we got you now one five stars from Flux A. Three long time friends talking and bullshitting each week about games. What more could you want? While well, the focus is on MMORPGs, they also cover a wide variety of other games each week and record live on Twitch. Stop by the chat room and take part in the insanity. Hey, so I would like to correct. It's three good friends and Brian's here too. No, he 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 actually he put in parentheses, but fuck Ryan, and I left it out. I thought it would be a little bit rude. Didn't want to be rude. You see. I paid him to do that. Yeah. So. We had another one that just simply states, "Great stuff, cool beans." Mm-hmm. Another Who one says, cool "Keep beans? keep up the good work." Another one, tons of fun to listen to and be part of the conversation. Check out their live stream. Great, great way to listen and interact with them as they record. So, thank you. That Steve's quite a guy. <laughs> no, that's, that's not... Look at the big dig on Steve. You're supposed to say who's saying these, by the way. Because yeah. Steve did. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you haven't and you enjoy the show, please go give us a review. Well, can you can you say who said those reviews, though? Like, uh, like no? 
No. Jason? No. I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, He's gone. <laughs> I, I'm pulling it back up. Uh, it's fine. You know, it's fine. Catchy name, JMR9770 and Nerd Bomber 27 I like that one. <laughs> Yes. We got the Nerd Bomber. Right. Right. Yeah. I just, like, because I... I don't know. I want to be encouraging if someone leaves a review to like, so that, you know, some people like to get their name read on the, on the thing. So, mm -hmm. okay. We don't have to. No, I, I just pulled them up. I just did. They did us a favor. So <laughs> that's cool. Write a, write a review so we can argue about your name. Yeah. Yeah. Nerd bomber. Nerd bomber. And G, what was the one? JR4329678. <laughs> JMR9770. There you go. It's a unique name, though. So mm -hmm. they had to they had to jump on iTunes to get that. <laughs> they, they didn't want to be taken. Oh, uh, you can't make fun of people who leave you good reviews. I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not. It's a good anyway, name. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, That's all we got. Yeah, yeah. We're on Stitcher too. Uh, JBJ Blaze and anyone else who's listening. And well, I guess if you're listening to podcast, you probably know where you're listening to it from. But we're on lots of stuff. We're on like Pocket Cast and Stitcher and iTunes and just try us, to find something that yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, leave us a Stitcher review. That would be great to get a couple of reviews mm -hmm. over there as well. Um, the problem is, is, well, it's not a problem, but there's so many ways to get a podcast.